Hi guys, it's Alex Hodgkinson here from Sector 3 Studios. Um, I have got a few questions in sort of interview form to answer for next level sim racing. Uh, so um, just because of the language barrier, I'm going to be uh, asking myself the questions that have been pre-prepared by him and, uh, and then I'll go on to answer them. So. Um, I shall get started. So the first question is, uh, would I like to say a bit about myself, what's my position at Sector 3, and what was my cre previous career in motorsport? Um, so yeah, I'm Alex. At Sector 3 Studios, I'm in charge of the vehicle handling. Um, that's my main task. I also take care of the way that the AI drive the cars and um, and sort of looking at race lines for, for new circuits and and um, just sort of various little tweaks and polishes that the AI need but the main task that I do is making the cars handle as it's supposed to um, okay so next thing next statement it's part of the same question but we shall carry on a few days ago I wrote on Facebook to next level sim racing that I'd already helped develop the GTPC mod for R Factor 1 a few years ago yes I did that was a really very big project and that that is something that came about because basically I am a really very big fan of group C cars I just think that they had some of the most amazing, evocative, special things to um, to ever be seen in the in the real racing world, and uh, and I was really quite disappointed that they didn't exist very much in sim racing. So I, with very little background, very little knowledge of how to do it, set off on a mission to to try to recreate them, and ended up um, building this team up around me with 3D modelers and painters and uh, and actually Anthony uh, our Anthony at Sector 3 Studios did the sounds for the cars um, and that's what I would count as my sort of audition that doing all of that work is what got me to where I am now so uh, for those of you guys that are, are interested in modeling and sort of wondering how you make the jump to like doing it as a job well there you go do it do the modeling well put all your effort into it do the best you can and and it and it does sort of lead on you can go pro as uh, as the saying is um what motivated me to become a full-time developer for race room and not work as an engineer real motorsport was really the fact that the opportunity um just sort of presented itself so i, I took it because it was something quite different um in the real world my job was I was working as a data engineer and a driver coach and a, and a freelance engineer and sort of combining all those three things together um, and that's something that I did for seven or eight years uh, and I really enjoyed it but I was just at the point where I just wanted to get something new going and I did not something completely different but just wanted to take the next step and, and I always thought that sim racing had the big potential to be a lot better to sort of really grow as well um, and that was in 2017 and I feel like that since 2017 things have really grown quite a lot so I've got into a, a really good time so that's great um, okay on to the next question can you tell me about uh, this team at sector 3 how many employees are there and where's the headquarters so the HQ the main office is in Sweden. Um, it's at a town near a big lake called uh, Linköping. And um, how many employees are there? There are, well, there are, I just had a quick check before I started answering these questions. There are 21 in our main Skype group, so 21 thereabouts. Um, and a, a really important thing to know uh, about. Sector 3 Studios is that our parent company is KW Suspension who are quite famous for making suspension for ADAC 
uh, GT3 cars. They've won the VLN series. They've won the Nürburgring 24 hours uh, many times in various classes. Um, and they are... Uh, they've actually they just announced that they're the official partner for the BMW GT3 uh, M4, the new car. So um, hopefully that means that that's something that we're going to be seeing in, in the future uh, inside race room. So that will be great as well. Okay, so next question: With World Touring Cars 2020, we made a big splash after the DTM 2020. Thank you. Um, is everything going? According to plan at the moment, well, yeah, really, it's um, it, it's nice progression from from my side. We've actually got to a really nice point where the big steps in improvement in car behaviours aren't happening anymore because we've got like a really nice base of knowledge and a base of tools all set up ready to go, um, so that. We can. We're basically spending the same amount of time developing each car, but it's all on small tweaks and like really f making all the finesse and, and all the small little things that make each car individual right. So, um, so it's it's a it's a quite a different dynamic to how it was like three years ago, where we were sort of learning things left, right, and centre, and and learning how to do things because. Um, <coughs> Pardon me. It's not necessarily a case that it's stuff that we didn't know. It's just it's a case of we didn't we knew it in the real world, and then we've got our sim, and then it was trying to correlate and make what we knew for the real world apply into the sim, and then just as as times progress, we've just sort of worked out ways and 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 what has to be done, and um, and yes, yeah, really, it's very much going to plan. Um, so let's go on to the next question. Um, okay, so the 2020 touring cars. Uh, did we get all the detailed data from the various teams uh, and how helpful were the race engineers and all that sort of thing is basically the gist of the question. Um, well, yes, basically. So you might recall that last summer we ran a eSports 2020 touring car series with the 2020 cars because they they had to cancel the real series because of the the covid or they had to cancel parts of the real series because of the the covid restrictions well that was really good because a lot of the real drivers did that series um i ended up in quite a lot of contact with them so I actually ended up in a WhatsApp group with uh, with most of the drivers from the World Touring Car Series. So anything that I wanted to ask sort of came up. I actually ended up in a WhatsApp group just in case they had any sort of hardware issues and maybe needed a few pointers and that sort of thing. Um, but I actually ended up having sort of long telephone conversations with these guys about uh, the direction that things needed to go and, you know, how could the cars be better? Um, and actually, to be honest, even even back then, even though we've made some changes to the tyre model since then, that's been the main the main change to those cars since we had them running back then. Um, the main bit of feedback that they had really is that the, the feel on the brakes wasn't quite right. Um, that basically they didn't work very well to begin with, and then then as they heated up as you got close to the corner, they became more effective. That's what was happening in the sim, and that wasn't quite right. And uh, it's something that I'd sort of bear in mind for a bit, but I didn't. I, I wanted to change it at some point, but just um, didn't think it was that important. But they were like sort of quite adamant, like, yeah, it's really important, get that right, and it's brilliant, and it's you know there there, there isn't really very much more feedback to say than that. Um, so that was the main point of development from that. Uh, and then the general guide that we get for developing the cars is different team to team. The, the information usually comes from the teams as opposed to from the manufacturer. Um, but when you have got quite a lot of data and quite a lot of information for a lot of different cars, it's like a patchwork quilt and you can sort of build up a really big picture because you've got XYZ here, ABC here from another car and then you can sort of, like you can fill in the gaps 
of one car with what you know about the other and then really another nice thing that's really good about those cars and makes it sort of quite um like a nice stable baseline baseline across all of them is um the uh the tires are the same across all the cars of course so um so yeah so that so there's no sort of um complication let's say like you might get in a gt3 or a gt4 where all the cars are in different size tires okay so on to the next question how much time um did we need as a team to make the 2020 um cars presentable and ready for the for the sim community um well i can't really speak as a team but i know that the the art guys is it it runs to get a car looking sort of right and ready and be sort of up and ready to go it's literally like a couple hundred hours it's really a hell of a lot of work and um you know all the it's all the fine tweaks and 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 another thing that happens there with the art department is it all has to be signed off by the manufacturer so we do all of our stuff they do all their 3d work and then they might send it back to Audi. Well, they have to send it back to Audi or or um, or Lada or Volkswagen or um, or one of the other manufacturers. And um, and then there's a little bit of a to and fro as they say, like, oh, this bit isn't quite right. Can you change where the tow hoop is or uh, the dashboard? That isn't the carbon fiber pattern that we have. Can you just change that? And then they have this sort of to and fro, and that can take a bit of time. Um, but with regards to the physics side of it, um, it's a sort of since we very first had a TCR car in game, it's like a constant development. So I think the first one was maybe 2018. So you can kind of say that it's like a, um, it's it's like at least a two and a half year like development cycle that leads where everything is now, and it's sort of like evolve continuously for that time it's not like we ever at any point like just wiped it and started again so um yeah it's quite organic so it's very hard for to like actually put a time on how, how long it takes um okay so i'm going to move on to the next question um so this one is about the audi gt3 evo um and can I explain the magic behind the Audi GT3 Evo? Well, I can't actually. Actually, um, I th basically the gist of the question is: Can I explain the magic behind the Audi GT3, GT3 Evo? Because it's brilliant, and I really enjoy it. Um, what are the recipes? Like, what's made it so good? Um, it's it's very immersive. Why aren't all the vehicles like this? Um, there's nothing that I can really say about that car in particular. I mean, all of the GT3 cars have had like very much the same treatment and they've all had like the same amount of love. I think that what really happens with those is that they, the GT3 cars are just reflecting what it's like in real life. So like the GT3 R8 Evo, like the, the mission statement for that car when Audi designed it was it needs to be um easier for for the sort of the gentleman drivers to to drive um and sort of like easier to work on and easier to just sort of get in and go um so i think that's exactly what comes through in in the game um that you know all those things that they set out to do to make their race car better makes it a better race car and race room than the previous one um I guess one thing that's quite a quite a nice development is that we started working more closely with the KW uh, damper engineers, and they are guys that know the VLN series very very well, um, as I already mentioned. And um, we basically really worked to make sure that our dampers were set up in the same way that they set them up uh, on the real cars. 
we you know you know it's, we just sort of worked really hard to just really get this correlation and if we if it didn't quite work inside the game like why and then we sorted that out um and i think that that's why you'll find that things like the snap back oversteer um and sort of like sudden loss of grip that you could get in previous iterations of, of car physics why that's like slowly fading away as we're understanding more and more about um that the role that the dampers in the suspension plays in that um so i'd say that you can look forward to more of the same with that okay so next question do we have a close relationship and exchange with teams and drivers with regard to the 2020 dtm and the gt3 series yes yes absolutely uh so dtm was was very interesting um it was really hands on deck for for them because um it was obviously last year was the last year of the the cars in that form before they've switched across to gt3 cars so um they were really pushing really hard for um for them to be out there in in basically in the gaming world and be really enjoyed so they really wanted to make sure that we could replicate them and they they were probably more hands on hands on and steering it than anyone else has ever been and like i had there the the technical director for the whole series was feeding me data and and we were sort of having back and forth about it um and we had um we had various drivers test driving it like sheldon van der linde was was testing it like really early on and and guided us with a few things so um so yeah and then another nice thing that came out of that is when we we had to develop the anti-lag system uh which is something interesting which holds the turbo pressure holds the boost pressure really high even when your foot's not on the accelerator pedal so next time you get on the accelerator pedal you don't have to wait for it to build up so, so it basically eliminates turbo lag um the thing that you have to get used to with that of course is it means that you've got a lot of instant torque it's like very aggressive throttle response um and of course we came up with some new bit of code which gives us different th- throttle response curves uh which we were really proud of um and then when we came to implement it with the dtm 2020 cars we said guys what about the throttle response curves that you use how are they and they said linear they're a straight line (laughs) okay right well we can't use that bit of code um so yes um let's go on to the next question uh okay it's it's a question about our tire model and that people on YouTube and social media sites claim that race room's tire model is severely limited. Um, yeah, no, it's 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 absolutely it isn't very limited. It's it I mean the yardstick is quite often um, AMS and our tie model is like 95 percent the same and that five percent difference is stuff that those guys developed in one direction and stuff that we've developed in another direction and actually it just so happens that that those two things might actually converge we might actually have done the same stuff but um no it's absolutely not severely limited it it can it can be whatever we want it to be it's just really a case of as i've made statements already about about various things it's about us understanding it more and it's about um creating the tools to be able to do what we want to do you know for example you can see that the the tire models or the tire version that we've put on the on the gt3s gt4s tcrs um is vastly different huge improvement over what we had like two or three years ago so um and you know the data from it and the tire behavior is is matching real world data and it's matching what i felt from the real world so i'm you know really very happy with with how it's gone and how it continues to go um we don't really see many b 
big gains there to be perfectly honest it's um it's a, it's a pretty damn good solid tire model i think it's really just a case now of tailoring it um and making sort of automated automated systems so that we can it can just make it a bit easier from our side maybe the end result won't be any different at all but um but so that we can actually say look this this car uses this type of tire and it's this type of size and it just gives us the answer because at the minute we have a little bit of a system where we have to go we have to just do some looking up looking through books looking through references to actually get it get everything in um but yeah so i i don't think from the user side point of view that there, there, that there really are big gains to be had um it's just from our tool use implementing it sort of perspective okay so i'm going to move on to the next question now um okay so both um next level sim racing and i um have a special passion in motorsports and sim racing for uh group four and group b and myself group c as i already mentioned um he wants to know what's the chance that we're going to add more classes uh, more cars to the group four and the group b um well i think i think it's possible we haven't actually got any plans at the minute but from within there are a few of us that are very big fans of those sorts of uh, those sorts of cars and those classes and the fact that we've got them in game in the first place means that they're always a candidate to have more added to and of course we also added the group two as well um, and what's probably quite important to note about that is that we added it as group two and not Scirocco Cup so therefore meaning that we've got a chance to add more to um, so sort of medium chance that there's going to be some more cars added to those in the foreseeable future um so we'll move on to the next question for now um what's our short medium and long-term planning and where's sector three heading oh that's a good question um short term you can expect um just more content in fact this goes for short and medium too you can expect more content to be added definitely um, quite a lot more from what I've seen um, and um, and just sort of improvements I'm going to continue from my side updating cars handling cars that haven't been touched for a long time hopefully some single seaters can be updated hopefully all the single seaters can be updated um, and some really untouched cars that I feel quite sorry for, for that are still in their sort of 2015 sort of state um, and then long term, um, long term, I think we've got a, a distinct possibility of, of um, race room being made to look prettier. Um, that's probably about as far as I can go, really, with that. <laughs> okay, and the next question is, what are the plans regarding DirectX 11? Yeah, as I just said, this is this can have the same answer, really. Um, and he has also added, I'd love to experience the 94 RSR or R8 Evo in the rain. RSR in the rain, that would be an experience. That would be interesting, hey? Um, but yeah, I see that as as like a medium to long term sort of plan, to be perfectly honest. Um, it's not uh, it's not my department and, uh, and either way, yeah, there we go. Okay, right. From, this is the last question. Oh, no, there's one more question, actually, after this. Okay, so a little bit of role reversal. From my point from my point of view, what did I forget to ask that's very important? And how would it answer the question yourself? Um, what is important? What did you forget to ask? Um... I'm not sure. I think that it would be very easy to ask me what. There are a lot of easy questions you could ask me, which you know, which you just get really long answers. For example, what cars would you like to see added to race room? Which circuits would you like to see added to race room? And um, 
this recording would go on for about another two hours. <laughs> but um, 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 what do I wish that we could add to race room? That's a good one. Um, no, I can't think of anything. I can't think of any more questions at all. Um, so I've got one extra question, haven't I? Um, which I will just find out. Okay, and the final question is: It looks like we have got a good cooperation with Audi. Um, how close are our contacts with within Audi, and how close do we work with the drivers? Um, yeah. So as I said previously, our parent company KW is a German company, and they do quite a lot of work with Audi for Audi. So therefore, we've got quite a lot of good contacts for, for Audi. And obviously, it shows with the cars that we've been adding recently because we've got the the GT... Well, we've got one of everything. We've got the GT2, the GT3, the GT4. Um, so obviously, we've got a very good relationship there. And um, hopefully, it means that we can, we can add more. I have actually been looking at some of the back catalogue of Audis and realised that there was a really nice Group 2 Audi in the 1980 something. Um, so yeah, so that's that's hopeful for me. Um, and then with regards to the, the, what they send through, it's always very good. Um, like for example, we usually get a workshop manual for Audi, which is exactly what the engineer would be using or the team would be using to make sure that everything's correct and present and set up as it's intended so uh, everything from uh, bolt torque settings to camber angles to how to use the dashboard display and that sort of thing and and that really means that it takes a lot of guesswork out it takes most of the guesswork out because because what i typically do with that is i just start on the first page of the, of the pdf and then i just go through and just pull everything off and if it says like the clutch is 300 and something millimeter diameter okay make a note of that and then i go and find the part number of what it is and how much it weighs and then we've got the clutch be behavior there and then you have all the gear ratios all there um and it really means that when it comes to actually us getting it up and running in game um it's just really a case of like tailoring it to be nice and to slot in with all the other cars at the minute and to work on our tires um which which are, seem to be pretty damn close to what the real series are running on because we're, we've got the same caster angles, same camber angles, same tyre pressures. So there's not a big scope for improvement to be seen there, which is very nice. Um, and then do we have close contact with the Audi drivers? Yeah, we've got um, like a, a pool of drivers that we we sort of like to, to tap on a shoulder. Um, guys that are racing in... Uh, British GT over in Germany. Um, won't name any any names at the minute. At the minute, but yeah, they are there, and there's definitely got people that I can pick up the phone and say, oh, "Could you just tell me a little bit more about this?" And uh, for example, the the R8 Evo, one of the guys was sort of really adamant to to drum home that the downforce. Uh, center of pressure is very far forward so it gets quite oversteery at high speed um, and that's one thing that does sort of come through with our car although our default setup has got a bit more wing that they would be using so it's a little bit safer and slots in with the other cars in the class as I said um, and yeah I think that concludes all of the questions so I hope you enjoyed <laughs>